Amateur Logic Shorts. We're visiting with Emmett Hohensey, W0QH, from Radio Waves. Hi, Emmett. Look what I got. It's the new oh, iPhone. Yeah, the AH705. We don't know what antenna we should use with this. What would you suggest? You know of anything? Well, I'm, look, I'm thinking maybe the Radio Waves RW705 antenna kit. Okay, the one that Ray had. Yes, the one in a nice little pouch that's extremely portable, easily deployed, and lightweight. Interesting concept in an antenna there. I don't know that I've ever seen anything exactly like it. What's unique about that one? Why can you work so many bands? The way it's designed, you could, it could be configured in multiple different configurations. Everything from a vertical antenna with a simple counterpoise to, let's say, an inverted L, a a flat top type antenna, an inverted V, a sloper. Uh, it's, it's all a matter of what you have available to you and how you want to set up the antenna. We even have it configured to work as a off-center fed, which it becomes extremely efficient as, as a radiator when attached to the AH705. And you know, that's what I thought when I saw it. I said, now wait a minute, that could be an off-center fed because of where it's being fed. Pretty much, that's exactly the idea. Unique about the, the way the kit is set up, you can hook up everything from uh, 3.5 megahertz all the way up to 50 megahertz with this system using the AH705. And by having the different lengths of wire in different combinations gives you the ability to, let's just say that you're, you're hiking and you just have a simple push-up pull and you only have space to do a vertical, but you can run the 33-foot wire up and still get 3.5 megahertz all the way up to 50 megahertz. Not as efficient, but it, you can still do it. And then if you really had the room, let's say about uh, about 100 or so feet, or yeah, it's about 100 feet, uh, use the 33 foot and the, the 60 foot element time together, the 33 on the on the ground side and the 66 on the, on the, the center post, and you'll have an off-center fed antenna that will give you just about every band. When we build our off-center feds, our, our DX80s, we put a matching section in the middle of the off-center fed, which allows, uh, you know, for that impedance, you know, match from 200 ohms all the way down to 50. The nice thing about the way the AH705 uh, works is it basically does that matching for us. It doesn't have to do a whole lot, so the efficiencies are there for both transmit and receive. And um, then let's say you decide you need to go off and do some other frequency, some other band that's not necessarily uh, a resonant frequency of the, of the off-center fed, the AH705 will tune that in just fine and uh, gives you a good all-round working solution. Yeah, that's real interesting. You know, I don't know too many people who backpack a 160-meter antenna. Yeah, well, with that combination, you should be able to do 160 meters at, uh, at what, 5 watts, and depends on uh, if you're using the 705 and you use the 13.8 volt battery, you can do 10 watts, as I recall. This thing is operating as a tuner or replacing yes. a ballon for an off-center fed, sort of, I guess, yes. as, as far as matching Pretty much goes. right. It does all that matching for you, so you're not having to, you know, have a, one antenna for every band or a specific antenna set up for... All, you know, all these different bands and different frequencies. It's just a matter of how you can set up, where you're at in the field, what your situation is, and what type of communications do you want to do. I really like how compact it packs up here. And this thing weighs almost nothing. Yeah, it weighs less than two pounds. It's designed with the backpacker or the person who's going out in the field in mind. Um, we've got a lot of nice little features and a lot of uh, just about everything you're going to need to set up the antenna in the configuration that you want. And because you've got the different pieces, uh, you can configure your, your your station or whatever you're trying to set up the way you want it. And with having, for instance, uh, that figure eight that you see right there in the middle, that allows you to you know string your dipole and just literally run the indents layer through that attach a rope to the top of that figure eight and it goes and you know it's flexible it's usable you can pretty much use it to set up any way you want without having to you know untie things right. like or whatever yeah. and then you've got uh the 60 foot cable which is on your left there with the nice red 
uh, cable or not cable tie, but uh, Velcro tie. Uh, you have the 33 foot wire on the winder and you can put everything on the winder. Uh, it all fits. It's just how you want to deploy the, the you know, the antenna when you're using it. Uh, the other wire that you see down there is a bundle of wires. And what that basically is, is a counterpoise if you're wanting to go vertical. Uh, there's a 16, 8, and a 4 foot wire, which uh, I'm giving you just general uh, measurements on the wire. It's not the exact measurement, but uh, what that is is a counterpoise that you hook up to the, to the ground component of the, of the AH705. Uh, this is such a dynamic duo. It's not really even a duo. It's a, how do you call it? A trio? I don't know. Uh, you know, having the, you know, the ICOM 705 with the AH705 with the RW705, it makes a great combination for going just about anywhere and operating anywhere. That's a nice little rope that we have. It's about uh, 200 pound. It's the equivalent of, let's say, 200-pound test or 200-pound braking string, which, you know, that should be more than enough for what you're, what most amateurs are going to be doing with, uh, with that wire. The, the wire will break before the rope does. And the wire seems to be, uh, this is not the stuff you'd get at Lowe's. Oh, no, no. It's a, like I said, it's a wire that we use for doing our Saturn antennas and some other antennas. And, uh, yeah, you're not going to be able to just go out to your home handiwear store and, and buy that uh, that wire to make it happen. And if you haven't noticed, uh, wire prices have gone through the ceiling. Uh, we've experienced almost a double uh, doubling of our uh, of our wire costs. Yeah, it should be on the shelf soon. We're currently selling that antenna system through our dealers U.S. Uh, directly through them. We don't we're not doing direct sales on this. One of the things that we do when we're manufacturing the products that we manufacture, for instance, on the on these antennas, the spade lugs themselves are not crimped on; they are soldered on, with uh, then a nice little stiff heat shrink jacket that uh, is all done by hand, of course. And what that does, it gives you a little bit of, of rigidity at the point where it's connecting to the antenna. So that's one of the places that we have determined over time. That's where things are going to fail, so we give it a little bit extra just so that it doesn't happen because, of course, things will fail you at the most inopportune times, and we try to set our, our antenna systems up to prevent that. One of the other problems that, we've, that we know of when you, heat, when you pretty much crimp jet, those type of lugs, especially in an RF environment, over time, especially if you go into mixed environments, everything from high humidity to let's say you want to work out on the beach, so that's salty water. What that does is it breaks down the 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 con basically the wires uh, basically arc in in a, in a micro way, and eventually what you end up with is uh, carbon in there and all this other gunk that uh, you know eventually makes the spade lug itself absolutely useless. And sometimes you think it's the antenna when it was actually the, the lug itself that was causing the problem for you. Yeah, but the thing I like about your antennas is they're all such heavy-duty components that they're made out of. You don't have to worry about it breaking. The thing's going to last you a long, long time, whether it's this antenna or uh, one of your uh, other wire antennas or your Scout or a hex beam. You don't have to worry about it. Those things are going to be with you a long time. Thank you. We tried to take an almost military approach to our amateur products because we know that most amateurs are working in places that, you know, you, you could, I mean, everywhere, literally the Antarctic to, you know, somewhere out in the middle of the desert, the Gobi Desert. Yeah. Really good stuff. Well, thanks for joining us today. And are you coming to Huntsville this year, do you think? I am planning on it, yes. Myself, HJ, and Jillian, and and most likely even MCOM1 will be there. Cool. Well, maybe we will see you over there. We've got our fingers crossed that, you know, that one oh, yeah. does happen. I'll say 7-3 for now, and we will catch you down the road. 7-3, George. 7-3, everybody. Bye. If you enjoy Amateur Logic Shorts, please click the like button. Be sure to click subscribe to be notified when new episodes become available. And let your friends know about this video by clicking share.